Coming to you live from downtown Detroit, this is Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep with your host, Joel Conan. This is a volatile puppy here, isn't it? And Dennis Dick. I've been the penny. I will buy the stock for a penny. With everything you need to start your trading day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this Friday, the 13th edition of Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep. Spencer Israel here with Joel L. Conan and Dennis Dick on the show today. A lot of news. We have the bank earnings. Uh, we also had some headlines last night that were unexpected. Uh, Johnson Johnson got it hit by a huge lawsuit defeat. We have a couple of uh, bad news in food land, both uh, Kellogg's and uh, McDonald's with some recall issues. Uh, another note this morning, downgrade on Netflix. We're going to talk about that. Uh, so a lot to get to. We'll, of course, take your questions from our chat on YouTube and premarket.benzinga.com. Joel, what is happening this morning in the S&P 500 futures? Uh, they're, they're hanging in the green here by two points. The battle for 2800 is on. 2807 and a quarter, that's your pre-market high. Uh, you have um, some March highs just above that at 2811. So if you guys are looking for another target on the upside, on the downside, pre-market low 9550. That's three bucks below your close of 9850. I see uh, interday support at 2791. If we take out that level, crude is down two pennies only at 7031. Uh, snuck under 70 and. Uh, 69.84 low, 70.42 high. So crude on the rebound. Gold loses 12.50 with a vengeance here, down nine dollars at 12.37.80, making a new low for this off little down move here. Perhaps heading for 1200. Silver in the red by 20 cents at 15.78. And Bitcoin, ah, it's up 64 dollars and 80 cents at 62. 3480. Uh, let's bring in Triple D here. How you doing on this Friday the 13th? Are you superstitious, Dennis? Are you like, are you a little bit worried about the market today or you're not superstitious? I don't know. I don't care what day it is on, on Friday. All I care is that the bank earnings just came out. I think we should go right to that. Sure. Citigroup and Wells Fargo both. Mm -hmm. uh, Wells Fargo looks like a mess here. The stock is trading yep. down, although trying to bounce back. Uh, we've got Citigroup uh, trading down here as well in the red. They both just broke. JP Morgan was earlier today. It rallied, has given it back. PNC rallied, has given a lot of it back here too. So far, not so good for the banks here, but it's early yet. So uh, let's get the numbers here from Wells and City. They just crossed the tape. Mm, yeah, Wells is a beat. Uh, Wells is a miss. Sorry, City is a beat. Wells Fargo Q2 EPS 98 cents versus a buck 13 estimate. Sales 21.6 billion versus a 21.7 billion dollar estimate. So, like I said, a miss on both those numbers. Citigroup Q2 EPS a buck 63 that beat the estimate by six cents. Sales 18.5 versus 18.49 billion dollars so beats for both on city misses for both on wells wells trading down 63 cents here in the pre-market starting to really fall here now it's kind of meandering around flat now their sellers are coming in right here right heavy right now down one and a half percent joel give us thoughts here wells we're so early here yet though i mean we gotta let you know it digest a little bit here before maybe you just jump in Dennis, are you willing to make another stand at $55 like you did on July 2nd, July 3rd, <laughs> well, also it July 6th? No, also. wasn't me. And it's through oh, 55. It's yeah, trying to go through 55. Yeah. 55. And, and making stands, you know, you can look at these levels and they're good. You know, obviously if they hold, it's great. But, you know, when they start to breach through them, you know, that's just all the levels are guidelines of where the stock could pause or possibly turn. I mean, in the case of AVGO, if you're looking at that 120 or 221 support yesterday, you got absolutely lamp based it. So you got to kind of feel the momentum too. When they're coming out of hard on news, sometimes those levels don't even matter. Yeah, but I, early I, on the wells. Yeah, I, I just keep an eye on 55. And Spencer, if you got the daily up, it's just scary under 55 uh, because you have a gap to fill until 5394. So this is a big move for Wells Fargo. Uh, but 50 need to get back above 55. If not, we're looking at a potential gap fill. Do we want to do, uh, do we want to do, uh, city? 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go to city. It's flat. Their numbers weren't bad, but it's getting dragged down by Wells here too. Now it was trading higher. It just went red. 
Okay. Uh, number of the day is $68. Uh, your last three lows, right? We're at uh, 67, 95, 94, and 84. So 68 is a level you need to hold on the downside, on the upside. Uh, trying to clear the close at 68.51. Yesterday's high right there. So tight numbers in Citigroup. Uh, JP Morgan uh, got the pop, uh, hit 108.60. Now falling back. Uh, let's look at the. What were the JP numbers? Spencer, okay. we didn't get those yet. The, J- the JP the numbers. Uh, the EPS two dollars twenty nine cents versus a two dollars twenty two cent estimate. Sales of twenty seven point eight billion versus twenty seven point three six billion. So beats on both for JP Morgan. Uh, the fiscal year net interest income is going to be between fifty four and fifty five billion dollars. These earnings are worse than expected, but they they were in such a getter before. I don't know if they're going to just kill them because of this i mean you know not that the that the beats but i think a lot of people expected them to blow it away they were talking yesterday you know on cnbc multiple times i heard analysts i also heard the fast money people talking that this should be a really good quarter for the banks um, i heard even tim seymour talking about that and giving the argument i think a lot of people expected them to have pretty good numbers um it really isn't the case here i mean wells is a flat out miss city's a slight beat jp morgan's a slight beat but that being said, the stocks, not like they were really running up into it. They've been in the gutter and been underperforming forever. So let's see what happens. You know, in some cases, you see stocks actually, you know, can rally here on not that great a numbers just because everybody's still got the hate for them. City's holding on. Wells Fargo is trying to claw its way back through. It needs to get above that 55 level that Joel just talked about. It needs to hold that. It needs to get above that. If it can hold that, there's you know the argument that this thing could turn around here. And JP Morgan needs to not go red because it's given back a dollar of the gains already. It's trying to hold on to the green. So okay trading action here for the banks so far. Um, the wells, as long as it can get back above 55, then it's okay. But uh, below this 55 here is concerning. Uh, and JP Morgan had the pop uh, and now has the drop. Uh, pre-market highs, I mentioned, is uh, 108.60. Uh, for me, you got a pair of lows uh, at 106. So you're still a buck 30 away from uh, any uh, serious uh, downside action. So keep an eye on 106 in JP Morgan. And oh, Dennis, oh, it, yep. Dennis, big day for, I think it's a big day for the market. It's a big day for the banks. Uh, they kind of faded off the uh, stress test results. And now this is earnings. So. Big day for the banks. I mean, it's a big day for the market overall, too. The S&P is bumping right up against that resistance that we had in early June, those four highs in a row. That's right where we were. And we're struggling to get through there. We were up over that overnight, but uh, we, you know, we're back to flat here now. So again, 280 on the spy just going to remain major resistance here. We've run up quite a bit, and that's, so that's the big test. I do believe we eventually take it out and go higher. But, you know, it's going to be a lot of new information coming in here. And if earnings start to disappoint, then look out. I mean, there's negative commentary for Netflix here, which we'll get to in a second, too. Again, negative commentary. I still think, you know, they're going to beat, but Deutsche Bank does not think that. So we'll get we'll get, we'll get to that in a second. One more earnings report to talk about, though. It's PNC Financial. It beat as well here. It did get the pop up to 142. It's already given back a lot of the gain here as well. Spencer, the numbers for PNC. EPS, $2.72 versus a $2.58 estimate. Sales, $4.32 billion versus $4.25. So again, beats on both numbers for PNC Financial. And the stock is trading up a dollar. We got a couple, you know, it's been light volume here. So PNC really wasn't trading on much. It's only traded 17,000 shares. Trade up to 142, leaking, and now it's back at 139. There is finding some buyers here at 139. So that's good news, but it's very early. Over, you know, we talk about overhead supply, and we're just not joking about it. I mean, that stock was as high as uh, 152. You know, prolonged sell-off, you get a pop over 142, and uh, here you are coming right back down. I'll just we are still and the banks are leaking more just to interrupt you. I mean, Wells has fallen another forty cents here just now. Citigroup has gone into the red. JP Morgan is just hanging, hanging on green. It's only up three cents here now. Uh, so you know, if you're trading PNC, keep an eye on the leaders because if they all go red, PNC is bound to go red too, despite its own earnings report. Right, and uh, PNC uh, looking at some levels here. Uh, one thirty-seven. That's my level here. That's still two bucks away, but that's a triple bottom from your last three sessions. Uh, also, uh, yesterday's close is still a buck away at one thirty-seven ninety-nine. Uh, back on the upside, if we get near one forty, that's a psychological level as well. Haven't been up near one forty. 
uh, since we made a 139, 56, and 54 high back on July 9th and 10th. So interesting, the trading action here this morning. You got Goldman and you got Morgan. Both these stocks have iceberg buyers here. So they're smacking them right now because people think it, they're going to go red too. But Can you explain that, Dennis? Yeah, so if you look at Goldman right now, 227.50. This is somebody bidding for 100 shares, but it's a lot more than 100 because it's been hit. Oh, it got hit. It looks like about 1,500 shares worth and not moving. Morgan Stanley got hit harder at 4,805. Uh, was showing just a 900 share bid, but it's been hit probably for about 3,000 shares there, not moving either. So two people uh, making a stand, or it could be the same person making a stand at both of these stocks, Morgan and Goldman. Uh, not sure the reasoning behind that. Maybe they just forgot the orders out there, or maybe there, there is a reason. Uh, but they think that these are going to hold on. And these didn't report, but it's usually, you know, if all the banks go red, usually those go red as well. JP Morgan's back in the green just slightly here while still down to dollar 25 so we're very early we'll come back to these multiple times in the show here because this is going to be your leaders here today what happens with these financials could potentially dictate what's going to happen with the s p's today can we before we move on uh we got a thank you in the google chat from jazz Liban. is that how you pronounce that spencer jazz Liban. uh they said thanks for the advice on avgo got in a very good position yesterday. And that's what we like to hear. Dennis, you want to recap that? Yeah, training? we don't give investment advice. We're giving opinions. You know, we're not obviously licensed investment advisors, but, you know, we do appreciate the, you know, the commentary. We, we like to give our opinions. And, you know, what we were saying yesterday on the show was try not to, you know, just jump in. When things are going straight down, people get hurt just trying to call the bottom. And last night or two nights ago when AVGO obviously um, – did the takeover of CA stock got hit down to 230 and after hours traders were buying it aggressively around 230 when it was down 12 there's people buying saying this is ridiculous it shouldn't be down 12 well in the morning it's at 225 and that's at 220 and people are buying aggressively still and I'm like all these people who are buying 230 underwater all these people are buying 225 underwater all these people who are buying 220 are underwater the path of least resistance is probably still down so, you know, you even said it could go to 200 bucks. I did. No, and, I you know, didn't. We just threw it out. I didn't think it was going to go that low, but it did. It went all the way down to $197. So the whole point of the story was just don't try to call the bottom because when you try to call bottoms, this is, this is how traders really get hurt. It's saying, this is it. It's got to stop at this level. This is a big level. It's going to stop here. And then it goes through that level and they're like, well, it's going to come back because, you know, and, then, and, and they're on the wrong side of the trade. They start losing money. So I like to let the dust settle if I'm going to call the bottom or otherwise I actually go with it. You know, often you see a stock that goes down three, four, go down five or six. The path of least resistance actually continues down because there's so many short term traders, day traders, you know, even short term market makers that are caught. And that's why, you know, when you see these moves go whoosh, they continue to whoosh sometimes all day. And that's just because the short-term traders are all caught long. And it's really what moves it, you know, and you've got to, you know, it's, everything's about crowded trades. Well, if you can figure out what the day trading herd, which side they're on, that's, you know, big and edge in your favor. And, you know, it was pretty obvious last night that the day trading herd was probably trying to call a bottom on this thing. You had institutional sellers that just kept knocking it down and wanted out. Well, those guys are long-term. They're not rebuying it. They're just getting the hell out. And they got, you're sticking it to day traders who think it's overdone. And all those guys got run over yesterday. And that's what typically happens when you get the crowd all on one side, the crowd gets hurt. And I just think one other thing before we move on, what situation you might have had in AVGO yesterday is you did have those brave buyers in the after hours market on Friday and or not on Friday, on Wednesday, also buyers on Thursday. And then like the, the margin department takes a look at these positions and they're like, uh, uh-uh, you're out. You're out on that opening print and that, you know, the open and then it was straight down ten dollars. So I think that that might have been a contributing factor as well. You know, people just getting margined out a little bit. Yeah. When a little bit straight down. I think there can be some of that. I think it's more just people puking, like we were saying, as a puke <laughs> fest. And I think there's just people who, you know, are on the wrong side of the trade. And yeah, you can, you may see a couple margin calls in there, sure, but it wasn't like the thing was down eighty percent, you know, and so. <laughs> I don't know how many margin calls are happening on a stock that falls 13% or 14%, but I do believe you know, that when people get on the wrong side of the trade, eventually they get out, especially the day traders, and they have to. And you see these markets are pesky. Like When they start going one direction, it's just a, kind of a momentum market. It continues in that direction for a very long time sometimes. So if you can get on the right side of the trade, it's good. What I've learned in the trading, at least for the last couple of years, is what goes down three often goes down six. Usually, you know, people look at a stock and say, oh, it's down three, it's going to come back. 
in this market, if there's on bad news, it seems like it isn't the case. I mean, it's one thing if the volume is light and, you know, it's still early. And it's in the case of Wells and JP Morgan, just because Wells is down a buck 50 doesn't mean it's going to go down three. It's early here yet. There isn't that much volume. You know, Wells has traded 262,000 shares. It's going to trade like 40 million probably by the end of the day, you know, 20, 30, 40 million. So it's really nothing compared to the relative volume. But when you get moves, you know, that are serious volume relative to their daily volume, those are priced in moves. So those moves often continue because they have a lot more people caught. I mean, Wells Fargo, when you like at 250,000 shares, there's going to be institutions that are going to trade this with 250,000 shares today. Like that's going to be their moving in order. So that's nothing. So the volume's light here. So the jury is still out here on Wells Fargo. But when you look at these stocks like AVGO and the trade, you know, way over the daily volume of the pre-market, that is a priced in move and there's people caught. So it's not only a matter of you got to look at the pricing, you've got to look at how much the volume is. Is it really, you know, on heavy volume and how many people are caught? There's nobody caught in this Wells right now. I mean, there, there could be, you know, a few people, but it hasn't traded much stock yet. So, and, and, and it was bad news off the hop. So it wasn't like, you know, sometimes, you know, mergers is people think, it, oh, it should, buy, it should go up. I mean, this was a bad report. There's probably a day traders that are selling this, actually. So there's not very many short-term traders who are caught long this right now. That's why that's a different story than the AVGO. It's still just trading off fundamentals. It's a fundamental trade here right now. AVGO was all trading off momentum yesterday. Should it have fundamentally went down to 197? Probably not. It's back at 209, but it was a washout trade. They took it under 200. They hit some stops under 200, and it bounced a bit. And can it bounce right back? Not easily because a lot of people are underwater on it. Uh, from Jazz, uh, do margin department folks call first or they just liquidate? And fortunately, I've never been in that situation. I know with. Oh, I've uh, seen it. I, yeah. I've seen it lots of times happen. No, I mean a call. Do they, uh, you know, to get a call, get a chance to put up the money? I, I know old school. They call you now. They just <laughs> pop up messages at you. I've been, I've been on margin, like, and not that I was losing money. It's that I get too big, and this is why I'm in a prop account now. So when I traded in retail accounts before, and you know, and I have a retail account, they only give you so much margin. So if you have so many positions on, they say you're over your regulation T <laughs> requirement. You have five minutes to start liquidating positions or we're going to start liquidating them for you it's a pop-up and it pops up and i i like take that message seriously because it, they will literally just start selling stocks out of your account at random so you know you don't want them just selling market orders at random get the hell out of you know whatever you can to get under margin again so i've seen it happen and a prop account is completely different because we're using you know pooled money from the firm and you know obviously there can be internal checks and maybe they're going to give you a call and say hey you're too big in this position we're uncomfortable with that but in a retail account, there is regulation there. And when you start getting over your margin, and you know what can happen is basically your margin right out, stocks start going against you, now you're over your margin. So they're going to send you a message quickly to get you back in compliance. And especially by the end of the day, it has to sell it. You can't be over margin. So they'll sell you stocks right on the close if they have to. So that's, that's a common thing. And I've seen it happen to me too. That I just got a little bit too big in one account. I was like, oops, I'm too big here right now. And you, know, you just back it off. But it's not a matter of, you know, blowing out your account and being at zero. It's a matter of you just got too many positions on. You got to get out of something. Yeah, and I, could, uh, I can remember it bright. You know, I would have the admin up there and, you know, someone would be in trouble. And then I would look over and it'd be a Las Vegas phone call. And it'd be Bob and he'd be like, what's going on? And I'm like, <laughs> I'll talk to well, them. They, they ha the prop really has to watch it because in a prop account, for the most part, that's pool well, yeah. money. Yeah, they, they could blow up the whole firm, you know, if you're obviously somebody's too big. But it's not only that, it's that they don't really have any recourse on either most of these prop firms. I mean, you you put your, you know, deposit in there, you throw your 50 grand in your account, you lose 100. I mean, the prop firm, they could try to come at you, but it's going to be tough go. You know, they're, they're, you're probably just, they're probably just out 50 grand. They're not in the business to lose their money. So, <laughs> So that's why you got to really watch it closely when you're in a prop account. And, you know, you don't want to have the whole firm in trouble. I mean, I trade, there's a hundred other, over a hundred other traders in our firm. I'd be pretty ticked off if one trader, you know, I was trading really well, all of a sudden my account's no good. That's why I'm at a firm like Bright. I've been there for, you know, 19 years. I know it's stable. I know, you know, most of the guys in there. I know we don't have any, you know, and, and we take, we're, we're pretty conservative firm. We don't have guys that are just going crazy and, you know, all of a sudden going to risk the whole firm there. They watch it pretty close. So know your if you're on a prop, you know just know your firm and know you know the money that's backing them and know you know that you know if you're comfortable or not. I mean, Bright Spirit Business is 1992, never had a problem at all. So that's a long track record. That's why I'm comfortable at Bright. 
Uh, one quote or one stock to look at Infosys Tech. This is for Stargazer. Oh, it. oh it did? Yeah, okay. It did. The other one. Was, it's uh, on my it's, list, but I don't know if we'd get to it or not. Spencer, what's the details? Uh, yeah, so it's you know the numbers aren't, aren't in dollars, but I'll just read the the, the headline from the release from the release. Uh, quarterly profit thirty six point one billion rupees. The consolidated revenue from operations hundred ninety for the quarter hundred ninety one billion rupees, uh, up from one hundred seventy billion year over year. So not in dollars, obviously. Stock is trading down 86 cents in the pre-market. The ADR it got up to 20, and that's just a big psych level. Trade yeah. over a little bit yesterday. That's where it's going to have trouble here again. I know. I know anything. You know, if it, if it bounces back, I just think there's overhead supply up there. So it uh, looks like it kind of was, you know, the run up into the earnings yesterday, the classic run up into the earnings, and uh, it's not disappointed comparatively speaking. So it's down four percent. Stargazer looking for support. Uh, you did have a series of parallels at uh, it, right around the $19 level, and that is what you hit here in early trading. You have a 1907 low. What concerns me here is that you're not getting much of a bounce off 19, right? If this was a, you know, if there was a big aggressive buyer in there, I think, you know, 19, you'd be up at 19 and a quarter, 1930 in a heartbeat. So 19 is my first level of interest here. And then if, in fact, 19 gives away, um, I see an 1863 low. And this is one of those stocks, you know, it doesn't do a lot of volume. You know, it, it might do like one of these opening prints, take out the pre-market low and then come back up through the open and the old whoops trade. But uh, 19 and 1863 are uh, some levels to look at in INFY. Uh, INGR, we have a request from the chat there to take a look at this one. There is, um, there is, yeah, City Cut It to Sell. I don't know if there's other Ooh. news on this, though. There's, there's, there's got to be something else. I want to be down 10% because City Cut to Sell, isn't it? They had earnings yesterday. Oh, last night? Yep. What are the numbers? The numbers, uh, oh, actually, you know what? It was just guidance. They gave guidance, guidance yesterday. Cut yeah, guidance. It, it, they cut the guidance yesterday, the Q2 just EPS. Uh, was cut down to a range of a buck sixty three versus a buck sixty eight for the quarter versus a buck, versus a buck ninety two estimate. Uh, they cut the fiscal year uh, EPS outlook from seven dollars ninety cents on the low end to seven dollars and fifty cents on the low end. So a forty cent cut to the fiscal year EPS guidance, uh, and that is your reason for the sell off this morning Ooh. and lobsters posted the note for us again in the chat if you're not following pre-market to what Benzinga.com. lobsters great he's always posting the analyst uh at least the commentary from the analyst notes there and city does cut this to sell here i can read it from the note here that lobster posted city analyst david to scroll downgrades the stock to sell from neutral after company lowered its q2 in 2018 eps forecast stating that he expects the stock's valuation multiples to compress as investors sort through the number of issues that have come to light he said a 95 dollars price target so city ganging up on it, but the main catalyst here is the lowered guidance. It's trying to hold a hundred bucks. Can it hold a hundred bucks? Who knows? This is a stock that's consolidated for a long period of time. Near so the low. Tell you, yeah, you know what? It went. It had this move, and you know you can do like measured moves here. We never talk much that on the show, but you know, for the initial sell off in April goes from around let's say 130 down to say 110 bucks, 20 points. And now it's consolidated between like 107 and 100. Forever. Now you're breaking that to the lower side. So if you take 20 points off that on a measured move from like the low of that point, which is like 107, that'd bring you down to about 87 bucks. So I, I think that their kid, this could actually continue lower. Uh, you did get a pre-market low at 98. Now you're getting a little bounce up to 101. So you, if you do go back into the decline here, I think you will find buyers ahead of that $98 level. But don't quote me on that. Uh, you had a 100. I think this takes out. I sense a bet. I think this sees 98. I think it takes out 98 today. I'll I'll even go even on it. I think it has to go below it, but I think it trades below 98 bucks today. I mean, he's really like, confident. He's got the hands behind his head. He's feeling really I'm good. Okay, I'm confident in this one. Okay, the saying, it's going lower. I'm calling it. It's going lower. I I'm in uh, pre-vacation mode. So I'm not. I'm not, <laughs> make, You're not making I, any lunch bets. I'm not making any lunch bro. bets. No, he's head not, to the UP. Uh, not quite the UP. Just under the uh, Backenau Bridge, Harbor Springs, okay. Petoskey. And I know 
if any and nobody in the chat and Spencer, I've been begging you to go up there with your girlfriend. It's the most beautiful country up there in Michigan. It blows away northern Canada, northern Michigan. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking. Well, Canada's pretty nice too. Swimming in Little Traverse nice. Bay. If you guys could get up there, I'll be up Have there. Have you been to Northern Canada? Um, he says it blows it away, but he's never been there. <laughs> yeah, I would. I, I I'm not going to go into my camp stories. Oh, damn! Yeah, well, that doesn't count. Halliburton. I've been in Halliburton. The land of the black flies. Okay. I thought but Northern I, Michigan was Canada, but in any case, uh, let's talk about Netflix. They're getting some neg- right, negative so. commentary this morning out of Deutsche Bank. Yeah. Uh, he didn't change his rating or his price target. It still has a buy rating and still has a $360 price target, but the, he doesn't see the earnings report that is next Monday after the bell as being a positive catalyst for the stock. He thinks there's a decent chance that they miss on their second quarter subscriber expectations so taking, everybody's fade me everybody's yeah, fade they're fading you and, and an interesting day to do this too because yesterday netflix uh for the first time in 17 years uh somebody dethroned hbo to get the most emmy nominations and it was netflix so interesting time uh for that to happen i don't know what to say um you know i came out i actually did do some research on that and they cracked down on this a while ago so they they know that there's been multiple and they and you're right spencer like officially they have you know you can have two logins or you can have four logins depending on your plan that's always been that way but then i was reading some articles and netflix really started to crack down on it over a year ago so my thesis that the, the crackdown was recent what is wrong so you know so i don't think you can get subscribers from that so i guess i got to throw what i was saying out the window yesterday i still think it's going to go higher i don't know if it's going to trade 450 or not i thought they were going to blow the numbers away for whatever reason i think they're still going to blow the numbers away so i think it trades higher but i think that's that pot could get sold too so i'm kind of going to be sitting out there on the sell button just in case it does pop i might trade it after hours but so i'm sticking with it I'm sticking with that. I don't know if it's going to see a 450 print after hours. I think it pops and then maybe drops. I, I, you know, you have a much better feeling. I've just, I don't know why. Just, I'm not I, even, I don't, I, don't, I, should, I don't. It's just a feeling. So this is just a pure guess. I just, yeah. I don't know why. I feel like they're going to beat those numbers. My main question in the earnings report is when are they going to wrap up a house of cards? Um, it's coming. That was, is that's the only TV show I watch? It's the last they're, season's coming up. And Ozark is coming. Ozark's coming in early August. Hey, Dennis, so, we just finished watching that last night. That's awesome, eh? Oh, oh, it was good. <laughs> I think Ozark like is one of their best. Like I was like, in you know, opinion. you get uh, what's his name again? Man, I J- dropped a Jason, blanker. Jason Bateman. Jason Bateman. Yeah. Oh, he's he's phenomenal. Yeah. And he he directed that too. I mean, yep. he is just a fantastic actor. So if you if you haven't watched, it's a, it's definitely not. A PG. <laughs> no. We'll say that no. it's definitely don't don't watch it with your kids. But man, that Ozark, that's good. That's good stuff. So anyway, so Netflix uh, with uh, 112 Emmy nominations uh, uh, for this year. HBO with 108, Hulu 27, Amazon Prime 22. First time, like I said, in 17 years that HBO did not get the most Emmy nominations. Uh, did we get one for uh, Best get- Market Information Show? <laughs> we get one. Yeah, we got one. <laughs> we shut up. Uh, hey, Dennis, uh, you want to go on an ETF rant here? Um, Jace is asking about DGAZ, D-G-A-Z. Uh, and I, what is that? Is that the up, down, inverse, natural gas? He said it's on a run. Uh, he said, uh, is it a bad idea for keeping your money in there for 10 to 20 days? Yes. <laughs> I would say it's a bad idea I, to keep. These are all day trading vehicles. They're not supposed to be held overnight. I and the would, reason is that is there's all kinds of you know fun stuff with the rebalancing all the time that deteriorates them over time. And if you look out to the monthly on this, back in July is $125. Now it's $25. I mean, you know, and there's a lot of other ones that look a lot worse than that. So actually, this is one of the better ones. But you know, when you get spikes, you know, and this is inverse to gas. So oh, so you're looking for the yeah. UNG sells off this is going to be going up three times they do what they're supposed to do it's supposed to do the the daily of you know the daily performance but these are for day trading these are not for long-term investing so anybody who's buying these different things and putting them in a long-term investment account is bound to lose the majority of their money 
So you got to read the perspectives. You got to understand the vehicles you're in. These things do the daily rebalancing and they're killer. Um, the best stat was uh, something I tweeted out a while ago, and I don't know if you I, have I remember what you said. It was, it was that the the XLF and the FA the FAS is the three times bear, or is yeah three times bull is the FAS, and that yeah. been, that the XLF had outperformed the FAS since the crisis. I remember that. Uh, what, yeah. I, what I was so going to say. The crisis, here's the three times it's supposed to do three times basically you know the financials which you know you could kind of use xlf it's not going to be the exact base but the, X, the, the one that's one times is outperform the three times one and that's because all the rebalancing that they do it matters on the track it's certain it could be a run for a few days if it's going straight up for days and days and days the, the three times will outperform actually it'll be maybe four times even the xlf it can end up but over the long run because markets go up and down these things tend to deteriorate over time so, and if you look at the FAZ, look at the FAZ since, let's bring up the chart and look at it since 2012. It was, and they've had to adjust it. I mean, it's had to split and everything. It's $1,300 and that's 10 bucks. So you lost all your money. If you bought this in 2012 and threw it in your investment account, you lost all your money. If you bought it in 2013, it's 300, you lost all your money. In 2014, it was $82, it's 10, you lost like 90% of your money. In 2015, <laughs> if you bought a 44 and you threw it in your investment account, you lost like 75% of your money. If you went last year and you bought it last year <laughs> and the financial aren't gone nowhere, you lost half your money. The trend is now your friend here. You do not invest in these things. These are day trading vehicles only. If you get anything from our show, find to have these Direxion products. You know, yeah, they're out there, the day trading vehicles, but use them for day trading. Don't invest. I was going to say, uh, I can tell you that a lot of uh, institutional traders use them as part of like a they larger hedges. hedging. Yeah, hedges. That's what I was going to say. So if yeah, you, if, I, use, I use them sometimes for hedges. Okay. So, so right. in my day trading. <laughs> right. Don't no, hold them overnight. D- day, day or maybe a couple of days. Maybe so, one ten, day. One ten, over ten maybe to twenty. One. Ten to twenty days seems like a lot to me. Maybe like a less than a week. Too long. Uh, in but my opinion, too long. They are. They can be a good hedge, but like he's saying, don't set it and forget it because they're not for investing. They're not really even for swing trading. They're more for day trading. The day trading is for hedging. Purposes. I could just comment. Short term hedging. It's like one I day hedges. Just, comment on like I don't get mad at me Dennis but I I did uh, play the crude break with some USO puts and uh you know did okay uh you know shorted it when it was around the 73 and a half 74 area and brought it in but there was one point and I don't know how they market I don't know what's going on the rollover or whatever but there was one point when crude was down like 35 or 40 cents and I was down on my put option and I, I just cannot figure it out. So they're not great vehicles, but uh, that that's uh, you know that's just to continue on uh, with what you're saying. Dennis, a stock that we wanted to cover yesterday, and I don't know if we did. Uh, ZGNX. Did we get to cover that? I know it was on the sheet. It had that big pop up yesterday on some. Um, what was the news on that, Spencer? What are you looking? What stock? Yeah, we did not see. Zed, Zed. Oh, Zed, you did it again. I'm bringing up CGNX. Zed. Z- so I'm living for Canadian. Zebra Golf. They have the X-ray. Right. Yep. This is the one we didn't we did not get to uh, on okay. yesterday's show, but they did have the the great uh, phase three drug news yesterday morning. And stock had the big pop up to 56, 58 bucks. It held those gains, and I mean we've seen this happen. Where these stocks have had good pops right now if you're coming through positive results these state games are holding i mean biogen's still trying to hold on here too as a it crazy is. pop there you know from their study there and it's held them they are hot right now if you're coming this is the best time if you're a biotech stock come out with positive results right now they're buying you and the gains are even holding for the most part so this is the best time if you're a biotech company to come out with those results so um, i'm not fading anything that has positive results especially off the hop because these things just continue uh, right now, they're continuing. Just uh, this got up in the fifty-two dollar area back in uh, December of two thousand ten, and then caught a cold and came way off. But uh, could could be a different story this time. Uh, if if I was long, if I'm not, I would just put uh, my stop under that gap under that low from yesterday at fifty-two ninety and say, "Come and get me," because I wouldn't want to see it uh, in the gap area. Uh, important to take out yesterday's high at 58.30 and uh, also to stay green on the session. You're out trading up 60 cents at 56 and a half. So pretty easy to do uh, do levels when uh, you know stock gaps up, uh, comes close to making a new all-time high and 
see if it could have follow through on the second day. And Dennis, you're absolutely right about uh, Biogen. I keep thinking it's going to fall into that gap area. And I haven't pulled the trigger on anything, but uh, 340, you did have the 339.15 low, but uh, Biogen really hanging in there. Let's go um, and check all this other news we had. So move away from the earnings, move away from the ratings. There was three different headlines, actually four different headlines. Oh, there just news. random news last night. First, let's start with the AT&T Time Warner stuff, because here we all think, OK, the merger is done. Now they're appealing it? I mean, the government's going to appeal this? Spencer, details here. What the hell is the government thinking? Yeah, so uh, Randall Stevenson, the CEO of at t said they, they weren't surprised, but I mean, mm. I, I think we the rest of us were because this, this deal was uh, approved. The deal's and, done! And it went through two days the later. Trading as one company. Right, and that was last month, and that was signed, so what are they gonna do signed they sealed, delivered. I'm not sure, but they're appealing oh. it. It's their right to appeal it. We knew that was a possibility, and now it's their DOJ is appealing it. Uh, I I would expect this could have some impacts on the uh, on the fo- the various Fox, Comcast, Disney, Sky yeah. bidding proposals because uh, this is a, this was a sort of a, a, a surprise move. You know, AT and T gets hit two and a half dollars when that merger gets approved. Now there's a potential that it might get you know <laughs> not approved and it falls another fifty cents. I mean, it, what a mess. You know, this is just AT and T and you know, this stock here has just got a debt problem. I don't, I have a small piece still in my invest portfolio. I think I'm just going to get rid of it. I had it for so many years in there. It's a 6.3%. I want no part of this. I mean, it's an attractive dividend, yes, but they got major debt issues here. Long term, who knows? Competition's all over them. And we've talked about this argument before. This is just scary um, from a long term perspective. Like, if you're jumping here thinking that's a 6.3, why would I not buy it? I, I think there's safer places to make 6.3%. So I, I, I'm, you know, not saying the dividend's getting cut. I'm just saying there's major debt problems here, and there's, a, you know, this, you know, think about the businesses they've been buying here. You know, Directv, while you know Netflix is just attacking Directv, you can bring up a chart of Dish. I'd say AT&T probably bought the top of Directv because Dish has been going straight down. I mean, you know, this is just people are getting rid of their cable. They're get, getting rid of. You know, they're, 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 you know, they got $10 Netflix. They're getting rid of stuff like that. They're, they're watching all their content online. So I just think long term, the margins are going to continue to be squeezed. I think they have a debt problem. Now they threw Time Warner in there, which, you know, sure, media, yeah. But I don't know. Maybe they can figure it out. But they're kind of just bringing on so much debt and trying to get bigger, trying to grow. And I think they're in danger of, you know, pulling like a GE where they get too big, too much debt, and they can't swallow it all. So that's why I don't want to own AT and T. That's my talk against AT and T. Uh, sold to you. Okay. And, that's, and I, I own it in my best portfolio. Had it for years. So it's a very small position. I mean, we're talking like 005 percent. Like not even like a, like not, not not even half a percent. Like you know less than a tenth of a percent of my portfolio. And that's because it spun all the stuff off. It's been in there. It's like so small. I just think I'm going to get rid of it this year. Okay, uh, 3162 is your pre market low. Trying to bounce off that level. Uh, two daily lows to keep in mind here. If in fact we do take out that pre market low, 3140, uh, that was your low on June 26. And the recent low of the move has been 3117. So let's see. We have found support in the lower to mid 31 handle before. We'll see if we can find it again today. And Verizon, same story. We've had a nice run up in Verizon. I like that as a short. I'm sticking with Jason Rasnick here. He came on when the stock was 54 bucks, and it's a good short. I think Verizon is a good short up here, too. Um, it's had a nice run. It ran up in the next dividend at 4.6%. Kind of keep going up. I think long term, though, I don't want any part of this in my invest portfolio either. They're not doing the stuff that AT&T is doing. But again, competition is just going to continue to intensify here. It's going to get cheaper to operate and have your phones. Everybody thinks, well, your phones aren't going away. These are forever. You know what, though? There's plans out there. There's competition. I think it gets cheaper. I think that squeezes margins for Verizon as well. So I don't want any part of either of these companies because I don't think the growth is there. I think the margins can potentially get squeezed over the course of the next five to 10 years and maybe even closer, sooner than that. Can't disagree with you on that one. Jump wow. over to the other news last night. And this is foodborne illness here. McDonald's Ooh. salads apparently uh, linked to salmonella. And this was uh, over 100 cases. So uh, we got, um, you know, obviously looking into this here. Spencer, what's the headline here? Uh, I mean, that, that, that is the headline, that McDonald's salads uh, are 
or uh, have been recalled. Not, what state? It was not, not recalled, state, right? Oh, Where Illinois. 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 Yes, thank you. And then my buddy, uh, my buddy has been having. He's in Chicago. And he's been having stomach problems, <laughs> and he saw this headline break last night. He's like. I might. I think I ate a McDonald's salad. He's like, I might have salmonella. <laughs> so funny, Dennis. I was like, I'm like, you don't have. I'm like, why? First of all, why would you eat a McDonald's salad? Those things are disgusting in the first place. You go to McDonald's to eat a Big Mac and a burger. I don't eat a salad at McDonald's. If you think you're trying to eat healthy at McDonald's and eat a salad, look at the calories in the dressing. It's uh, anyway. It's gonna go to McDonald's. Yeah. Don't worry about the health. Enjoy the taste. You eat salads at McDonald's. It's bad news all around. It's Iowa and Illinois, and the link is with a, some sort of parasit be, between some sort of parasitic infection and McDonald's salads. So they have stopped salad sales across the Midwest as they investigate. 150 and McDonald's says they're working with them, so they didn't deny this. 157 and a half. We're down a buck and a half. We were worse last night. We bounced back a bit, bit here. This chart doesn't even look great, though. There's all kinds of resistance at 160. If you're coming here saying this is the dip to buy McDonald's, it's not Chipotle. It's not going to equalize, not going probably, you know, nationwide here. But and the salads are just not a main seller at McDonald's anyways. Like I mean, if they said it was in the Big Mac sauce, I'd be a lot more concerned about it. But <laughs> how often um, do you eat you know, McDonald's? The chart looks like hell. Down at 155, you got support. It gets to 155, it maybe bounces there. But at 157 and a half, you're in the middle of nowhere. I tend to think it gets sold more than it gets bought. Uh, pre-market low, which we bounced off, uh, was uh, 156.75, getting a little bit of a bounce. Uh, the low of the move, boy, this chart does not look good. If you really start going negative or the market, which is starting to leak right now, Dennis, uh, we are now in the red in the S&P 500 futures. Uh, pre-market low stands at 95.50. Uh, if you really get going into reverse here, your June 26 low was 155.10. Uh, that's where I would look to bring in a short that's still two bucks away uh, on the bad news for Mickey D's. And we also had uh, some problems with Kellogg, right? Yeah. 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 Salmonella has been linked to uh, Honey Smacks, a cereal that I've never had in my life. And I, that's. Oh, was McDonald's something else? I said Salmonella for McDonald's. What was McDonald's? Yes. It was it, a different McDonald's one. was just like a parasitic thing. I'm not. Okay. I don't, I don't so it wasn't was Salmonella. Specific. Sorry. It was something Salmonella else. Salmonella is Kellogg's, Kellogg's Honey Salmonella. Smacks, which I've never had. And apparently that's, that's I made the right call. Who the hell buys Honey Smacks? I don't know. I didn't even know that was a cereal. Honey Smacks. Uh, I mean, it, sounds, it sounds like it'd be pretty good, but I never. Well, not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. Don't, but don't eat Honey Smacks. Don't eat McDonald's salads. That's the best tips you can get for pre-market prep today. <laughs> Down to 70 cents in the pre-market. It's Light, the last volume. Light volume. Light volume. And it, it, it's probably going to be down on this. I don't know how much. It's like one. It's not like all their cereal. It's like one of their small summer cereals. Cost of salmonella, potentially. So it's not good news. So I'm not surprised it could trade in the 69s. I don't think it goes down to like 68, 67 bucks, so. Pre-market low uh, is uh, 69.40, and you have a daily low right there at 69.54. So that's your level of control. <laughs> uh, if not, we'll look for the lower 69 handle. 69.17 was your July 3rd low. And then the other headline there that I had on the sheet was... Big headline. J&J. Yep. Yeah. yeah, this was interesting. So Johnson Johnson has been ordered to pay off... For- over $4 billion, $4.14 billion in punitive damages related to uh, a an ongoing cancer lawsuit. Well, one of the many. There's several ongoing lawsuits, but this is the one in, in Missouri. Uh, talk powder. Yep, talcum powder. And they've, like I said, have been ordered to pay over $4 billion. They've already said they're going to appeal. Uh, but that was, a, that was, I think, a surprising verdict uh, last night. Huge amount of money. I mean, that's scary. And they actually, it's funny. Um, I, I sometimes make markets after hours and some of the bigger stocks. And I was making a market, Johnson Johnson. That headline cross was like, get those orders out of there. Get those orders out of there. You know, so I'm like, cancel all. Cancel J&J. Cancel, cancel. I got my orders out because it broke the headline. And then I turned around, try to get the orders out. Then I turned around, try to short it. And it's like, you know, I was quick enough to get my order out, not get hit. And then, you know, I'm turning around trying to short it, but I couldn't get anything in the 127 handle. Then it was in the 126s. I was like, wow, I'm not going to hit down to the 126s. I should have. Then went down to the 124s. So it's getting hit. Fish and market hypothesis, you know, would say, 
well, they're you know, going to burn $4.6 billion. They should lose $4.6 billion in market cap. But it did. But it lost more. It went down 6 or $7 billion. So, I don't know. Maybe there's going to be some more. I don't know if this is the end of it or if there could be potentially more you know, lawsuits or something on this. I'm not sure if this is the end of it. But anyways, because I, I don't follow the story. But it's a big hit for Johnson & Johnson. Went to one twenty two fifty. No. I see a one twenty two fifty. Really? That's yep. going to be disappointing. Yep. yep. Wow. Yep. You know yep. what? Okay, stock is back in favor. Stock reports earnings next week. I, I want to buy the dip somewhere here. So I'm a buyer <laughs> of this dip in Johnson Johnson just for the run-up, but I got to let the dust settle. Again, I'm not going to pull an AVGO and say this is it. But that one at 22 and a half, that's a line in the sand. It gets back anywhere near there. I might take a shot. I mean, yeah, it's bad news. Yeah, but maybe this is the end of it, and they're you know they're gonna you know they're probably gonna peel it anyways. I think this dip actually on this one is a buying opportunity. So it's, I'm not often that I'm fading news moves like this, and I, I just got done you know the last 40 minutes talking about how the momentum market these moves continue. In this case, the stock was back in favor. In this case, the stock is reporting earnings next week on Tuesday. I don't know. I feel like I feel like I am going to buy the dip in here somewhere, but I want the dust to settle. I want a level to lean on. So not going to be pulling the trigger at 9.30. Going to check out the action there. But as soon as it starts to catch a bid, I might try to get long. Uh, the rebound high has been 125.56. So if you're looking for continued follow through on the upside from this news, I'd keep an eye on 125.56. Uh, in order to fill the gap from yesterday, you need to get all the way up to 127.17. Uh, I don't know. I don't think we're going to be seeing that. Uh, intermediate resistance at 126 because you had a pair of lows at 126 from uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. And then uh, remember, just a couple other stocks we have on the list to talk about. Amazon Prime Day is Monday and Tuesday. Monday and Tuesday? Yeah, it's a 36-hour event. Starts midday Monday, goes through the end of Tuesday. Stock always runs up ahead of Pride Day. And yesterday was up 40 bucks. I mean, uh, sleeping out the wheel on this, obviously, you should have bought it yesterday. It's up another five here again today. I got to think, you know, we're down here a little bit. I think it's going to be some size at 1,800. So I think the stock actually doesn't open above 1,800. You know, just for you day traders out there, it's 1,802 right now. I think there's a play here, maybe short of pre-market buy at 1800 at the open. But at the open, we know Prime Day runs up. I, I don't know if it's going to continue again, but I never want to be short this going to Prime Day because it seems like it always goes up at least ahead of Prime Day, which is today. And then off and on Prime Day near the, near the open, it's actually up again. So I don't like to be on the short side. So definitely not shorting it. Looking to potentially get long, but the 40 point move from yesterday scares me because now I'm buying somebody else's profits. So I'm definitely not shorting it though because it's always strong ahead of Prime Day. 1809.32. Next year, I'm buying it three days ahead of Prime Day. Yeah, someone got excited. They took this up to 1809.32 on very light volume this morning. But uh, Dennis is good with the order flow and potential orders at the open. I, so I think there'll be something. It hasn't been through 1800. Ever. No, I know. I, I think there'll be something at 1800 holding it down for the open. Um, you know, it's a matter of does it doesn't just blow right through that then. I think 1800. I'm calling your opening print unless the market really starts to roll over. But I don't think, I don't think it opens above 1800. That's what I'm saying. I don't think, I think it, it opens above 1800. <laughs> I'm still in pre-vacation mode. I am not. I'm not fading you on this. <laughs> You're kind of agreement on this. You don't think it's open over eighteen hundred? It's eighteen oh three in the pre-market. I just think I don't think it's open over eighteen hundred. We'll see though. It's traded sixty nine thousand shares. It could, but I don't think it does. So that's Amazon Prime Day. So don't forget that if you're trading there. Uh, we're, we're flying through the sheets here today. So we had a lot of the sheet. I didn't think we'd get to cover it all, but we are getting to cover it all. I want to talk about our stocks we haven't talked about for a couple of days on the show. H-U-Y-A, IQ, Joel, you can go on mute because you don't like talking about these things. But I tell you, H-U-Y-A, blast off into orbit again yesterday. Uh, two days in a row it took off. Went up to 39.85. Did close kind of week. So it went up. Basically, we went from $30 to $39 in two days. It was a big move. IQ started to catch a bit, though. Went all the way up to 35 bucks, closed fairly strong. Our SOGO that we talked about, which I actually bought two days ago at 10.05, uh, but I quickly sold it that day, day trade. I sold like 10.30, way too soon, 11.14, so, but that was a day trade. I just thought it was going to bounce off 10, which it did. Uh, probably should have stuck a few as a swing trade because it's now 11.14. And then also uh, the other one that we talk about with these is IQ, HUIA, SOGO, BILI. 
that's the other one too. And it bounced as well and starting to take out 14. So you know what? On pullbacks here, these things are probably buys now. The other ones here, the other IPOs, you can look Spotify blast off into orbit yesterday. Just took off. I know Jeremy Newsom had a great trade yesterday. Jeremy, if you're listening, good job. He does a great job over there at real life trading uh, with his risk management and always, uh, you know, and, and makes great calls on stocks. Spotify, uh, I know he just booked one there. So good job, uh, Jeremy. Dropbox, another one, looking like it's got life here now, too. So, you know what? I'm a buyer of pullbacks on almost all these right now. And uh, I just, I'm not going to look at the charts of these or anything, but uh, I, I will just say that, you know, if you're looking, let's say for the HUYA, I'm just going to go to my old bag of tricks here and, you know, take the high of the all time high, just under $51. You look at the low of the move, 20, uh, let's call it $28. That's 38.48, 23 point move, basically 12. I mean, 40 bucks. If this is for real, if this and is that's the where rebound. I got to yesterday. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, oh, great. Yeah. This one was good yesterday. Thirty nine eighty five. Yeah. So it, it failed there. So you know what? HUI now has resistance at thirty nine eighty five. So I, I, I'm a little bit, you know, gun shy on that one for that reason. I think if it retests, it might actually be a short up there. The BILI yesterday's low twelve ninety five blasts off to fourteen forty. I think it pulls back into the thirteens. I think you got some buyers there though. So let's see if we get a shot at a pullback. I might take a shot. I'm not going to chase it, though. Okay. Uh, for Jazz, uh, FireEye, uh, it had that upgrade earlier in the week, and now you're getting some Come really – Yeah. It, it, it was a little bit uh, squarely on the day of the upgrade. It made a top, and then it consolidated for a day, and then busted out over 17. I mean, I do see a, a high up here. I just one short-term target, 17.45. Uh, that was your high back on June 13th. And then you got to start to think about $18, but uh, it got the move, the consolidation. Um, Nice move higher here at FEY. I have a Today no is real strong thir- opinion on this. Today one. is June 13th. I'm sorry. I'll get, what am I doing? Today, 17, 1735 is where the stock's at right now. So it's, okay. at, it's, at, it's at the high from a month, from a month ago. Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, I thought I said 1835. Oh, okay. Uh, my, my I'm sorry. You're, you're right. No, there was a high right there at 1745 <sighs> on June 13th. Okay. Spencer. I think so, it sees 18 bucks. 18 bucks. I'll go with that one. Uh, I, I, I don't know if it sees it today, but I think that's where it's running to. That's where I probably, if I was in it, that would be my target. And that's probably where I would dump it. So it's, it's running into troubles there before, you know, 18 to 19. So I think that would be my target if I was in it. I'm not in it, but if I'm in it, I would probably hold and try to go for 18 bucks. Okay. Uh, here's I sold my Tesla yesterday. Oh, how come? You know what? I hated the, pra- the the trading action on it yesterday. So I was in it for a swing trade. It, I bought a 308. It went to 327, which I obviously was sold there. Came down with the overall market. That was fine. I was fine with that. Came down 315. Yesterday, I actually took out the 315 low, bounced a little bit there. But the market had a strong day, and this thing was red. I didn't like the pricing action on it. I didn't like the relative strength. I don't like that. You know, it didn't bounce right back. I was thinking it would bounce right back with the overall market. It did not do that. So that's why I sold it. So I'm out. I made eight points on it or seven points or something. I'm out. Um, it, it was just, it was a little bit, it just didn't feel right to me. So it was a swing trade. It wasn't a, a, a long term investment. Um, I kind of, you know, was already up and I never like a winning trade to become a loser too. So I kind of was already mentally raising my stop up and I did not want it to take out yesterday's low or the day before low, which it did. And then it went down 312, and then it bounced back up to 315. I was like, so I sold, I think, right around 315. And it's at 316 right now here in the pre-market, but I didn't like the action. So I, I'm not saying I'm bullish, bearish here. I just didn't like the trading action yesterday, and it made me nervous. So I sold. Okay. There's nothing. Still snap, though. I still bought, I still snap SNAP. Still like that. I think it's just got been doing some work here between 12 and 13. I think eventually snap is taken out 14. When it does take that out, it might add to the position. But if it if it takes it out, but okay. I like this. that's my uh, only long swing trade right now. So you know, it's just for you to the show. I have day trades, which I typically do fifty to one hundred trades a day. Then I have a swing trades where you know these are longer term where I'm putting these on for days to weeks, and I have my long term investment portfolio. Right now, my swing trade portfolio I only have one stock, and it's Snap. That's it, and that's because this market, um, you know, has run a long ways. I had a few on. Um, you know, and, and before I had a lot on, but right now we're up at resistance. 
I don't have a lot of conviction. I'm probably looking to add some more to my swing trade portfolio. Dropbox is interesting right now. If DBX pulls back today for whatever reason, I might add that one to the swing trade portfolio, stopping out under 30. And these are just style trades where I've you know got a you know a risk return set up ahead of time. Where and, and most of my trades, I always have a risk return set up, but. You know, I usually like two to one. So if I'm risking a buck, I want two bucks. If I'm risking two bucks, I want four bucks. Kind of goes like that. Uh, I got a stock for you to do some uh, research on today. Uh, e R O S. Uh, Samir Dosa says, uh, "Good morning. Would you mind taking a look at this stock? They're basically a pure play on Indian streaming video and original content." Growth E R O S. I've never heard of the stock. Either have I. Either of I, and he takes. But it's if a, that's what it's a pure play on, that's good stuff. I, mean, I think so too. Streaming right now is hot, so I'm interested. I'm going to do some homework on this one. I don't know, Chad, if you can help us out here. I've never actually traded this stock. It's not a lot of stocks I've never traded before. EROS, I just wrote it down, so I can't tell you. I tell you, the chart don't look bad. I mean, it's found support here at 1390 the last few days. Below 1370 starts to get a little bit sketchy, but chart chart looks okay to me. I wouldn't say yeah. it looks great. It looks okay. It looks like it's kind of just like ready to, you know, it could go either way. So, you know, above 14, above 15 bucks, 15. It's in, it's 15. Most, below yep. 13, it's in trouble. So, and you're kind of in the middle here. So, 14 are kind of in the middle. Eros, okay. Eros if I could just interrupt for a second, they're India's, sure. they're India's uh, largest uh, OTT platform. So, over the top streaming provider, basically, that's what like a Netflix is, for example. Uh, we don't have a ton of headlines on them in pro. We do have some. They had earnings of like two weeks ago where their Q4 EPS uh, was five cents compared to a four cent loss year over year. So some nice year over year growth there. And same thing with the sales, about $20 million in year over year growth. Uh, that's one thing I was going to say. They Someone came out negative uh, on them from the Sone conference back in April, but um, not a ton here to go off of. Great well, answer. it's it's in the right, you know, the streaming stuff can get hot in a hurry. So if the streaming stocks all take off, which they kind of have been the last few days, it could be one. But why didn't this one go? That's more of my question here, too. I mean, the last couple of days, streaming took off again, and this stock just sat there. So maybe nobody's following it. I, I don't know. But that's one thing to be concerned about. In, in any regard here, it's kind of in the middle here. Below 13 bucks, it's going to get ugly, I think. Uh, but if it can get break up above that 14 and a half, 14.75, it can make another move. So Put it on the watch list. All right. Uh, S&P is down three quarters of a point at 97.75. Uh, Dennis, any any imbalances here? We kind of got a two-way market here in Let's this look. today. I haven't even looked at myself, so just hot off the press. AT&T, 167,000 to sell. We know that's going to be trading lower because of the appeal there from the DOJ. We've got Bank of America, 101,000 to buy. Most of your banks are trading lower. City is now a dollar in the red, while it's dollar 67. Bank of America is in the red if Bank of America opens green i will probably short it so right now i would say it would open green but it's a long ways to go johnson johnson seventy five thousand shares to sell that's off the uh the news of the lawsuit uh, or the appeal or of the 4.5 billion they're gonna have to pay for the talcum powder debacle alibaba fifty five thousand to buy um you know what though we're, we're leaking so i'm just looking at i'm looking at what's trading up here this morning and there isn't a hell of a lot of stocks trading up so, you know, I do see a few of, uh, I see the TLT trading a little bit higher. I see some of your utility stocks trying to catch a bit off that because we know that they move positively with that. But I'm not seeing a lot of stocks really trading higher. And that's somewhat concerning here because this market is only slightly down. And usually when you've got a market that's basically flat, I mean, we're down two, three points. You have some stocks up, some stocks down. I'm not seeing much trade up. So, and we are at resistance. So, just caution here. Caution, at least I caution early. And what I'm about still this? Bull train, though. What about Wells Fargo here? I mean, you made you made mitts meet out of fifty five so far. Oh, you made it's, a, now it's fifty of volume too. Yeah, fifty four twenty one low, and you're only eighteen nineteen cents above that. And uh, folks, just you know, you got the gap fill of fifty three eighty six. So. You could get that quick whoosh under 54, but uh, I'll look at that potential gap fill there in Wells Fargo. Uh, as far as the S&Ps go, I'll just give you a, a level here. If we do, we're two bucks above the pre-market low at 95.50. Um, if we do, in fact, take that out, uh, small support at uh, 27.91, but just be aware, yesterday's Globex low was way down at 73.75. Uh, Dennis, uh, 
30 seconds here. Any, uh, any final comments? Uh, just caution today. It's, this is a day that's going to be very difficult to call. We had a big bounce day yesterday. Could we get a little pullback today? Yeah. Could we just, you know, continue and start ripping? I think we could do that too. So I'm kind of, it's coin flip day for me. I don't have a good feel for here. You know, the market leaders, the financials are showing weakness here, but the market isn't really rolling over either as Wells and City continue to drift down. We haven't had the banks really participate for a long time. So I don't think it's going to be overly concerning that the, if the banks are weak, that the whole market's going to get dragged down here enough. The banks, alternatively, if the banks would have been strong, would have dragged the whole market up. So this market wants to kind of still go higher, even though the banks have you know, obviously been a lag on and it seemed to be a lag here this morning. And we're going into earnings next week. I mean, we're going to have Netflix reporting Monday after the bell. We're going to have you know, Goldman Sachs, we're going to have Bank America, we're going to have UAL, UNH, we're going to have IBM, eBay, American Express, Microsoft, Ooh. General Electric, Honeywell. So you're going into a big chunk of earnings next week. It's not the heart, but it's the beginning of you know, getting into the heart of earnings season. So, you know, that could be a driver here too. So right now, I just want to see what happens here after 930. Do the buyers reemerge? Can we challenge the resistance that we keep bumping our head above, which is, you know, 280 on the spy? Get above there. Maybe we got some catalysts going forward. Banks are holding us back here this morning. Let's see if, if they can start to reverse and start to go higher. They'll bring the market up. The banks continue to leak. I'm not sure the market follows. So I'm not overly bearish here. I'm just uh, kind of waiting in, waiting for my opportunity to buy more stocks. That's okay. Well All right. Well, uh, you guys be on uh, your best behavior uh, next week. We got uh, a special uh, guest host lined up. Spencer, oh. you want to uh, preview what's going on in the docket yeah. for next week? And uh, I'll miss you guys. Be safe and uh, listen to listen to Triple D's advice. He's trying to help everyone out. Joe won't we don't be. give advice. We don't even like using that word advice. <laughs> Joe won't okay. be here. No but... advice on this show. It's only stock tips. It's just our own <laughs> opinions. Just opinions. Joel? Wash your mouth out with soap before you go on your vacation. I had to, I had to get, I had to get uh, scolded right before the There's show. No ended. such thing as advice on this show. All right. Well, Joe won't be here, but we're going to have a guest host, like you mentioned, Kenny Glick. Uh, so you know. Oh my goodness. I know. I know. So we're, we're, <laughs> I had better strap on my my seatbelt here. I know. This Monday, <laughs> Kenny. You- Yes, yeah. yes. This Monday, I got I got my finger hovering on the mute button. <laughs> oh, yeah, you better. Right. We, it, we could actually have some calls from, you know, he, he, he likes to use some cuss words. Sometimes. We're going to on, yeah, on for five minutes. We can keep him in check on for an hour. He may slip up. It'll be <laughs> I, I, th- I think it'll be OK. But anyway, Kenny, Kenny Glick from Hit the Bid Radio, he will join us on Monday for the full hour. Uh, Joel, like he mentioned, will be out for the week. We're going to miss him, but we have uh, various guests lined up to uh, fill in for Joel. So that's going to be it for us for this week. If you want to catch any part of our show again or our podcast, you can do so by watching it on YouTube or catch the podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, TuneIn, or Google Play. Just search for Benzinga on any of those platforms. Thanks to all of our chatters today, both on YouTube and on premarket.benzinga.com. Thanks to all of you who tuned in this week, all of our guests who tuned in or who joined the show this week. Hope you all have a good rest of your day and have a good weekend. We will see you guys on Monday.